Hey guys, it's Brian from Spreadsheet Sports, and this is the demo and user guide for the NBA projection tool. So when you first download the tool and open it up in Excel on your computer, you'll, you'll see the projections tab first, which is what you see right here. I want to call your attention to the fantasy site setting in the top left corner. This is where you can change from FanDuel to DraftKings. Uh, the, the tool is only going to work with one site at a time, so if you are looking to make lineups for both sites, make sure you do everything for one first and then go back and um, change it to the second site that you'd like to use. So once you have it set, if you have it set to FanDuel, you'll see the player pool right here just as you would on the FanDuel site. And you'll see all of the various stats associated with each player on this, on this particular game. So you'll see the opponent, the Vegas numbers, the total line, you'll see the site where they're playing, how many days rest, their injury status, and whether they're expected to be in the starting lineup or not. And then you'll see those, the final projection here, the base projection and the custom projection. So let me talk first about the base projection. So that is going to be determined by what you put into this box up here. So a lot of times when I load it by default, I will use a one right here in the last 15 games. So what that's saying is the average across the last 15 games is my base projection for every player. Now, you see, you'll see that you can use the floor and ceiling numbers across any of these various time periods and you can blend them together as well. So if you want to say I want to use you know partially the last five games and partially the season average uh, I can go ahead and do that right here. So I can put a .5 in here and I could go down to season and I can put a .5 in here. If I'm doing a, a GPP and the ceiling numbers are a little bit more valuable to me, I want to see what players have propensity to really have a big night, then I might put some value in the in the ceiling column if I'm, I'm doing a head-to-head -head or a 50-50. Um, the floor might make a little bit more sense uh, to see kind of what I want to, to, to build my lineup as. So the, the total weight in this box, the values that you put in here, should add up to one if you're going to be using it as it's intended to be used. So now before we get into the custom projection, let me kind of go through the next steps in the tool. So the refresh is going to refresh all of the injury and so I'm going to hit that button right here. It's going to refresh the injury data. The so that's coming from Roto World. It's going to refresh the Vegas numbers, uh, the expected starting lineups for the night. It's going to also refresh the the salaries from FanDuel and DraftKings, all of the last five games, last 15 games data. All of that is going to uh, kind of filter through and, and pull different data down from the web as as this is working. So this usually takes about 30 seconds or so to to run through and I'm going to kind of just let it run as we're on the video here. You'll see Excel kind of you know going through different sheets at a time. Uh, that is what you should expect. You'll kind of see down here in the bottom right corner you can kind of see what it's doing at the time. So it's it's connecting to the web, it's it's retrieving data, it's copying data. Uh, there's there's a lot of different steps that it kind of goes through, uh, but once it gets back to this screen and you don't see anything happening anymore, if it looks just like this, then you know it's done. You see all your games that are happening on this particular night, um, and you see this column here in green. If there are if you're playing in a late contest or some kind of contest that doesn't include every game on that day, you can set any of these games on here to zero, and it won't use that in the tool at all so it'll zero out projections for all players in that game. You can also go over here and exclude individual teams so if you really don't like the matchup for the Celtics tonight you can put in their team abbreviation and it will zero out all players from the Celtics. So that's kind of what the refresh proce process looks like. Uh, that, that's something that you should probably do right, right away when you open the sheet up. The next thing I'm going to go to is the optimal lineup tab. So once you have everything set the way you like it, you can go over here to this optimal lineup tab. You shouldn't have to do much else on this tab except click this button that says find optimal lineup. So I just clicked it and again this is going to vary depending on the machine that you're using. 
um, how fast it is, what version of Excel you're using, but it should take anywhere from 10, 10 seconds to a minute to have this run through and find your optimal lineup. Uh, this particular machine that I'm using is a Mac that's running Windows on a virtual machine, so there is a bit of a lag in how long it takes. Um, the newer version of, of Excel on my, on my Windows-based machine takes about 15 seconds to, to run through this. So this is going to take a little bit longer than average, uh, but I just kind of wanted to give you um, an idea of, of what to expect here. If you do run into an error on this tab, um, please see the troubleshooting tips tab. It's likely that you don't have the solver plugin installed. Uh, there are some other things that can happen as well, but uh, take a look at that, that tab and uh, follow those instructions. Anything that you'll have to do to get it fixed is, is very easy. It's just installing a plugin or potentially shutting down Excel and, and reopening. Um, so th there are some, some different um, issues that, that people sometimes run into, but it's, it's pretty easy to, to get through that. So once this is done, and you'll, again, you'll see the, on the bottom left here the, the progress and how, how quickly it's going to be done. Once it is done, you'll have your optimal lineup that it suggests here. And it's going to tell you uh, their projection, the value that they're expected to hit based on their salary, and then it's going to give you a total projection for that lineup so you can kind of see uh, what it what it might um, get to. If you're playing in a contest that has a salary cap different than the standard you know, 60000 on FanDuel, then you can go ahead and change that up here. But any of the other values in here, you know, selected for lineup, things like that, th th those aren't intended to be touched. Uh, that's for the algorithm to kind of work through and to find the best lineup. Um, so all you really have to do on this page is, is to hit that button and then kind of wait uh, for however long it takes for that lineup to be found. When it's done, it's going to, you'll see a pop-up box, you'll see here in a second. There's some technical speak on it saying that it found a solution. And you want to hit the OK button for a keep solver solution. And then right here is going to give you your lineup and you, you'll see it kind of changed a couple players. Um, and then this is going to be your, your total projection for the night. Now, there may be players on here that you think, whoa, that, that doesn't seem right, or, or I, don't, I don't think that's really going to happen. So, you know, James Harden at, at 62, that might seem pretty high for him. That's actually because I, I put him into this hunch adjustments uh, section right here on the player adjustments tab. So if you have different thoughts on who might do well or, or who might... Um, might be in for a bad night. You can you can put those in right here. So I, you know, I had a thought that James Harden might have a big game. He's against the Pelicans tonight. I put ten points in there for him, and that got me into my new projection of sixty-two. If I take that out, it's going to give me, you know, the base projection that he had of, of fifty-two. So I can put any players in here. I can subtract from them, and you'll see once you put their name in. Um, so if you want to put in Anthony Davis, once you put his name in, you'll see his his projection, and then you can kind of add, subtract to it from there. Um, and that will be taken into account when you run it again. If you want, if you want to build your lineup around a certain couple of players, uh, no matter what the projection, you, you definitely want to get them in your lineup. This is the lineup guarantee section, so you can add players in there, and it will, it will always select those players. And also, if you want to exclude players, if you don't want a particular player to show up at all, you know, regardless of the projection, you can add his name to that list. This minutes adjust adjustment section is where, if you're doing your own research and you know that there's a backup that's going to be playing extra minutes tonight that would be different than he would normally expect to play, uh, you can factor that in here. So if I know that, you know, Carmelo Anthony's out and you know, Tim Hardaway Jr. is going to play some additional minutes tonight. I can put him in here and I can say, okay, he typically plays 22 minutes. I think he's going to play 35 minutes. So now it's going to give him an adjustment based on those new minutes that I put him in, based on his fantasy points per minute. So he's going to get eight points added to his projection uh, based on kind of that, that information. The tool does do an automated version of that, and this is in the depth, the depth chart adjustments section. 
So it goes through and finds all the players that it knows are injured. And it looks at who would be next on the depth chart and who would be replacing those players. So this is kind of an automated version to give that, that new minutes. But it doesn't fully take all new rotations into account if there are things that you know, a coach might do differently that he hasn't in the past. Obviously, it's not going to be able to be captured on this particular screen. So you can go in and make those adjustments right here on the, on the player adjustment section that are different than, than these step chart ones. <coughs> Excuse me. So once you've kind of made all of your changes, let me go back to the projections tab. There's also these adjustments. So based on the Vegas line, based on you know where they're playing, who they're playing against, the opponent, and their particular position, all of these adjustments are going to either add to that base projection or subtract from it. So Durant, in this case, has a slightly positive matchup. You know he's he's projected to get a little bit more than than his base. Uh, Kyle Lowry has a pretty favorable matchup. It's almost six points higher than his base. Whereas Steph Curry, you know, playing against Lowry and he's a pretty good defender. You know he he comes down a bit from his average. So instead of trying to get into the math behind all of these different adjustments, I'm going to refer you to the user guide to kind of see examples and, and how each of those can be used. Um, but you can, in, in this section here, you can turn any of, the, any of these adjustments on or off. And then you can also use this, this re regression level setting to, to kind of um, rein in the adjustments a bit. So if you use it at a regression level of 1, it's, it's going to be applied to its fullest extent. If you, if you add to that, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come closer and closer to 1 for all of these different adjustments. So you'll see in all of these kind of sections right here, anything higher than 1 is going to be a favorable matchup. Anything lower than 1 is going to subtract from the player's fantasy points. So once you've kind of made all of your different adjustments on the player adjustments tab and decided which adjustments you actually would like to use, then go ahead and go back to your optimal lineup and hit that button again to run it and get your new lineup. And you can do that as many times as you like. Um, exclude players, you know, guarantee players, and kind of get to um, the lineup that you're most comfortable with on a given night. So. That is it for the walkthrough, and please take a look at the user guide if you have additional questions on how some of these are set up. Thanks.